Welcome to the DARPA Grand Challenge. The objective? Create a self-navigating autonomous vehicle that can safely drive 132 miles through a harsh desert environment without human intervention. Yes, these are robot cars, and if you've ever wanted to see the future, take a good look, because it's right in front of you. The technology we see here will be used in the military within the next few years, and eventually, robots like these may be taking you to and from work. But it's not easy. 43 teams from around the country began with dreams of building a robot capable of conquering this course. Only 23 teams earned the right to run in the $2 million DARPA Grand Challenge Final. For qualifying teams, information about the event is held in tight secrecy until race day. It is only then that they will receive details about the course. At 4 a.m., just two hours before their scheduled run times, competitors are informed that the route will stretch 132 miles over rugged desert terrain. With that information now in hand, teams rush to program their vehicles to navigate the thousands of GPS waypoints they will need to pass to successfully complete this challenge. At dawn, an eager crowd of spectators take their place for a chance to witness automotive history in the making. At the pole, the heavy favorites take the line. Carnegie Mellon's red team will run first and third, separated by Stanley, the blue Volkswagen Touareg from the Stanford Racing Team. For these teams, $2 million and a scientific legacy is at stake. Red Team Highlander gets a green light, and it's official. The DARPA Grand Challenge is underway. Ladies and gentlemen, Highlander. <laughs> After a quick bow to the crowd, Highlander smoothly turns the corner, accelerates, and heads toward the horizon. Five minutes later, it's Stanley's turn. Jumping off the line, a sudden left turn at the gate nearly ruins the day for Stanford. But Stanley makes the correction and heads out in hot pursuit of Highlander, traveling 30 miles an hour as it reaches the first dry lake bed. In another five minutes, Red Team Sandstorm leaves the blocks, once again demonstrating Carnegie Mellon's precision craftsmanship as it enters the desert. By the time the fourth robot, Team Axion Spirit, leaves the gate, history has already been made as Highlander crosses the eight mile mark, further than any vehicle traveled in the inaugural Grand Challenge. 20 more teams followed the big three out of the gate, all hoping to complete the 132 mile course in a winning time. Team Dad, with its rotating cluster of sensors, sped off the line, making up ground and passing Team Axion in the process. Team Ensco's buggy-style robot, Dexter, also left the line with a full head of steam, fiercely attacking the desert terrain. Cat 5, the Ford Escape hybrid from Louisiana's gray team, eased its way past the crowd, and Terramax, the 16-ton cargo hauler, left the gate determined to finish the course. To finish the grand challenge, robots must travel on tight desert roads, over dry lake beds, through clouds of dust, under three tunnels, and finally, at the 123 mile mark, through the toughest part of the course, Beer Bottle Pass, a narrow winding road with a mountain wall on one side and a 200 foot cliff on the other. And early on, the big three showed why they were the favorites to win this race. Mile after mile, challenge after challenge, Highlander, Stanley, and Sandstorm flawlessly rambled on all of them hitting GPS waypoints with human-like precision. As the big three continued to tick off the miles, others fell by the wayside. At the nine mile mark, Team Cornell Spider was the first vehicle to leave the race after hitting the side of the bridge and failing to recover. After 22 miles, Princeton's Prospect 11 and UCLA's Gollum 2 could no longer continue. The smaller vehicles in this race all suffered. Early in the race, Rascal from Team Cyanotics suffered a software problem, and at the seven and a half mile mark, Monster Moto, the ATV-based vehicle from Texas, stopped for good. The reliable Ion from Ohio State and the Virginia Tech injuries all stopped within 45 miles of the starting point. After a quick start, Team Dad's spinning sensor failed 
ending its run at a marathon distance of 26.2 miles. And Alice from Caltech went out in spectacular fashion as it plowed over a safety barrier and up a berm toward a frightened crowd of onlookers. But no injuries, she was stopped in time. But not every robot suffered a dire fate. As the race continued, dark horses were emerging. While the red team robots in Stanley crossed the 70, the 80, and the 90 mile marks, gray team's Cat 5 was surviving the robot wastelands, and Terramax continued to plot along. It was Dexter from Team Ensco, however, that was really opening some eyes. The speedy, buggy-style robot was not only navigating the course cleanly, but also making up time on the leaders. Although starting the race more than an hour behind the big three, early split times indicated that Ensco's Dexter was actually winning this race. There was a long way to go, but things were looking up for the underdogs. For two-thirds of the Grand Challenge, everything was going as expected, with Highlander in the lead, followed by Stanley and Sandstorm running a close third. Split times were very close, it was anyone's race. But something was not quite right. After months of successful testing, Red Team programmers were confident of Highlander's abilities and planned a high-speed, aggressive attack strategy for the Grand Challenge. At this point in the course, Highlander should have been 20 minutes ahead of its current pace. There was a problem, a glitch in the system, and it was causing the big red Hummer to limp. At the 102 mile mark, just before heading into the mountain section of the course, Stanley tracked down and passed the crippled Highlander, putting Stanford Racing Team's Volkswagen Touareg into the leader position and effectively ending Highlander's bid for glory. But there was still hope for Red Team. Sandstorm was keeping pace with Stanley, and it was still anyone's race. And that anyone could have been Team Ensco. After starting 10th out of the gate, Dexter was flying through the course, steadily making up ground. With an average speed over 19 miles an hour, and with accelerations of 40 miles per hour on straightaways, Dexter's chase vehicle is having trouble keeping pace. Stanford may have been leading the pack, but this was a time trial, and halfway through the course, Team Ensco was winning the race. The Mojave Desert, however, is an unforgiving place if you're a robot. Any one of a million things could go wrong and force an early retirement. For Ensco, it wasn't a software glitch or a faulty sensor to blame, it was simply a flat tire. After striking a rock, the tire went flat, and the air was let out of Team Ensco's dream for the $2 million grand prize. With Team Ensco out of the way, the Stanford Racing Team had a little more breathing room. If Stanley could safely navigate Beer Bottle Pass, it would likely win the DARPA Grand Challenge. To traverse the pass, Stanley must follow several hairpin turns running alongside of a 200-foot drop. The margin for error is small, and for humans, the steep drop is a psychological barrier which makes driving this mountain road a hair-raising experience. But what does stress mean to a robot? It means absolutely nothing. Stanley calmly carves its way around the sharp turns and leaves Beer Bottle Pass without a second thought. With five miles to go, Stanley steps on the gas, racing toward the finish line on a dusty desert trail. As Stanley crosses the finish line, the Stanford Racing Team has made its way into the history books. So I didn't anticipate this to become a race for speed. It's one of the, the most thrilling races ever. Uh, we've been trailing the Red Team for a long time, actually for three hours. It was kind of clear to me we would actually come in second. And then all of a sudden, a turn of events, a little thing had happened, a little glitch, and all of a sudden we, we got the lead and, 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 and came in ahead of them. Um, but the most important thing for me is, uh, it actually doesn't matter who comes first. It matters that we as a, as a community achieve it. Stanley is not the only robot to conquer the Grand Challenge. Red Team's Highlander finishes close behind with the third best time, and Sandstorm arrives not much later with the second place finishing time just nine minutes behind the Stanford Racing Team. For the big three, the day is an overwhelming success, but they are not alone. Hours later, after being delayed several times on the trail, Gray Team's Ford Escape Hybrid makes its way through Beer Bottle Pass, and as the sun sets, Cat 5 crosses the finish line with an overall time just 36 minutes slower than Stanley. And last, but certainly not least, Big Terramax made its way home after hours of delays and an overnight stay in the desert. Ironically, though Terramax was the slowest finisher, a platform similar to this will likely be the first autonomous vehicle the military puts into service. Overall, this year's DARPA Grand Challenge was a smashing success, especially for the Stanford Racing Team. 
The technology demonstrated here will greatly impact our future, and Stanley will be remembered not only as the Grand Challenge champion, but as an icon that marks a change in the history of transportation. Get ready, we're about to enter the age of autonomous vehicles.